So we're going to keep the topic of bullying up here mostly because it should always be targeted towards adults, not children. And I'm going to show you some passive aggressive behavior by bullies. And this was interesting. And they always present themselves like they're some type of saint and that they're just somehow morally better. This is what bullies do. So they try to present themselves like they're this innocent saint and that they're morally better on this level okay but you'll see it and they're gonna try to play all these games with me even explaining this so but that's what narcissists do since you guys like to use the <laughs> the term narcissist okay so this is a straight up bullying towards victims like straight up and the way that they do it is to gaslight you to make you feel like you're wrong for us um, defending a perpetrator. Okay, this is the craziest thing that they do. But one of the things it was seen actually at the very beginning of Me Too as somebody pulling the shit and being one of the top bullies out here. And like I said, I go, it's really easy to fall into this type of um, um, group action and you have to be really aware of it. So this is what they're doing here. And they're going to flip it and say, you're the bad one because we're the perpetrators and you need to be kind to us like this thing. But let me tell you the truth about this. If anybody actually really cares about this guy, they would not be enabling him to harm himself. Okay. He's harming himself. So then he harms other people. And anybody that enables that are the people typically that these type of addict type of people, because addiction is a part of that where these type of people will gravitate towards people that enable them. And then they're chronically miserable. So we talked about the chronically miserable socio, right? So chronically miserable and they cause it themselves. And so they'll be vindictive towards people that are trying to help them. Now there's a difference between actual help and people who want to control you. Those are actually two different things. So we've seen these different dynamics going on and I'll touch on these stories, you know, I don't want to talk too much about some other people, but yeah, you'll see the dynamic is actually different controlling people and actually wanting to help somebody because technically if you want to help somebody, you want them to get better and not act in these ways that, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so at the same time, it helps us all to kind of understand our human nature and things like that. These people are just straight up bullies. Okay. So let me show you the presentation of this. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not surprised by all the trash up in here. Um, but this also answers your question as to why and how it went on so long. The thing was, it had been going on forever and everybody knew, but it's these people. And what do they really care about? They're going to tell you what they care about. They don't care about humans. They don't care about humans suffering. They don't care about humans at all. But they're going to try to present to you that they do. But watch what they care about. And it's pretty gross. Oh, Sharon Stone and Liam Neeson issued statements in support of Spacey in a story by The Telegraph. Okay, so these two want to even come out. She's like, they're pushing a rush to judgment. What do you mean a rush to judgment? <laughs> He's got like decades long of allegations from men. And the thing that makes it so gross to me is that women presenting themselves in this story, um, it's so gross because they go, the reason why we're getting raped actually is because of this combination of things going on right here. And there's a whole lot we could say about Sharon Stone, but she's going to let us know her true evil self. I can't wait to see Kevin back at work. He's a genius. He's so elegant and fun, generous to a fault. Knows more about our craft than most of us ever will. She just ran over humanity. I mean, does any part of that show you that she cares about him as a human? No. What is she saying here? Ah, he's a genius. His elegant, his work, his work. All they care about is his work, right? That's it. So she actually is feeling into male supremacy where it's always like my success, my this thing, that thing. So they don't care about him as a human. They only care about him as entertainment. That's pretty sociopathic right there. I only care about you as an entertainer. 
I don't care that your actions are harming yourself and other people. All I care about is you entertaining my stupid selfish ass. That. And then just ran over a tank of people that came out. I mean, there's more than that. There's like literally a thousand, you guys. There's like, there's a lot. And it was just this little excerpt of what was going on here. So, <sighs> I was like, this is insane. I think the worst one is this one here. And he said, okay, Kevin is a good man and a man of character. He's like, I get groped every day from him. It's totally great. He's like, he's sensitive. I had to laugh at that one because they're like, he's sensitive. And he's like so monstrous that it's just like, I mean, it's like, how much did he, I mean, did you guys have it out last night with each other before you wrote this? And he said, okay, articulate, like who care? I mean, I don't know what the thing is with articulate. Like somehow like that makes a person like, <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't, it's just, oh, I'm a privileged little piece of shit. You know, anyway, and this was the worst non-judgmental. I'm like, well, you're off kilter. Uh, that shouldn't, <laughs> he's like, Kevin's like, Oh, this 13 year old came up to me and I don't judge anybody by their age, <laughs> you know, the non-judgmental people. Okay. So this was used, this is used as a bully tactic. So he's like, so when, when victims are coming forward, you know, making the accusation that he touched them, this is when they throw that out. there. Oh my God. This is when they throw this out here. Okay, so if Kevin had a sex offender registry thing, and he came up to you and he's like, okay, I'm looking for a job to babysit some kids. This guy's going to go, oh, we got to be non-judgmental. I'm going to let you watch my kids. Yeah, it's a thing that it's like to an extent, right? Like that you would be, uh, no, you have to judge people all the time because people have motives. People are doing things and, um, but these people are not actually being non-judgmental. They're actually being judgmental because they're saying, um, these victims are garbage and we're going to call them liars. You know, not that they technically think they're liars. They, it's actually more of a thing about self-preservation and that they don't care about human suffering. So they are void of empathy for others completely. And they're trying to say, oh, well, we do here. I go, how come your empathy is always towards a perpetrator? So it's something that you relate to by being a piece of shit. And this has nothing to do with them. Uh, and he's a terrific sense of humor. Um, why don't you ask these thousands of people that he harmed if his humor was uh, great? Anyway, so it says he is also one of the finest artists in the theater and on camera. Personally speaking, our industry needs him and misses him greatly. And I was like, this guy's such a misogynist MS piece of crap. Because when have you heard any person say this about a woman? I've never read that line. You know, everything is supposed to happen for a reason, right? That's how these people think non-judgmental everything has a reason well maybe that reason was to open up a new space for a woman to take his place i mean you know these these idiotic people no they're absolutely off kilter they're bullies and they are being judgmental so when you hear that statement no it's a bully tactic and adults need to fucking grow up and they need to take accountability and kevin actually really needs help he, they're not real friends because they only care about him for his entertainment not him as a person and him harming himself and others this is them so these are the people that have held them him up the whole time to cover up sexual abuse on everybody else these are going to be the same people that do the same thing to women too it's not it's not just this one thing all these people are sitting there trying to do shit to go after other people because they just don't like them and so they're not actually against any of this conduct. And they're the ones that kept this going. Everybody knew in the story. Everybody knew all these people were fine with it. And for some psychotic woman to go, I'm glad it's not happening to me. And it's happening to guys instead. That is some warped ass shit going on over there. I don't even, I didn't even see anything like that. And the last thing in my brain would be going, oh, thank God it's happening to this guy. But they said it in the documentary, guys. I was just like, oh, what? Um, at least they're honest. I have, they're, they're just going to out themselves. So here's something else. This is a flag with these bullies. No, they're bullies. It is a definite form of bullying. 
So what is the definition of bling? So I actually went through this whole thing and it has nothing to do with me saying your hair looks like shit for the day. Um, it has something to do with the power dynamic and them abusing it. So when a celebrity, when celebrities gang up and they start protecting a big sexual bully, um, which is actually part of Kevin's traits here as being a bully, and when they all start ganging up together and taking over and trying to harm a group of people that they seem as weaker and mm, disposable. That's sort of the word. So they see Anthony's disposable. They see everybody else is disposable because the way they view, and they're telling you how they view him. They view him as the greatest genius on planet Earth, like a, like a Baba, some guru, some god to worship and they need to run over everybody else to keep him in his position of power. Hold them up, but they're bullying. So that definitely fits the definition of bullying. So they're not sitting there taking accountability. This would be like a school, right? And this is the principal. These are the principals and the, and the teachers and the faculty. And they know there's a kid running around raping everybody or a teacher. And they're like, you know what? But he's the greatest teacher in school. He's the greatest history teacher ever. So we're just going to ignore that. These people are off kilter, seriously off kilter, and they're a danger to us all. And I just wanted to point it out because it's so insane. And then they start, and it always turns into this self gratification thing. Like, this is the way I feel because I really love his work. And they're like, we're going to just ignore a little pedophilia and raping everybody on the globe. Because what I found in this topic, and it's really scary, the ones that were defending this right here going on like this were the people that also did what the perpetrators have done. And I want you to sit with that because, as I said, it's more of a self-preservation defense. And so you have to question, like, what did you do that you're trying to preserve yourself over? Because I did find this and I was like, I, I, I am bothered. <laughs> I was like, I'm really bothered by this. Um, but it probably could also be that, uh, like, if you look at a situation like a female, you know, defending it and because she got molested as a kid and then okayed it and sees it as her fault. Like you could see, find that in it, but um, the men in here have definitely, when they defend this, have touched some kids. I have found it to be, or they, or they raped somebody. I have found it to be true. And it was sort of a mistaken, accidental find in this thing and I started noticing it more and I go oh yeah the people that are defending it is self-preservation so it means they're flagging you saying I did that too I did something and I did that too and men don't realize that we're actually on the side of you not getting harmed and they'll flip flip it and try to make us the monsters and that they're the great people that are supporting men or something right Obviously, if you support one guy that has harmed thousands of people, you're definitely the problem. I mean, you're definitely the problem. I mean, it's pretty blatant. So, um, okay, and then it just shows all his comments from that other thing. Yeah, so that's it. So, but it's not like there was a tank of Hollywood, but trust there's a tank of Hollywood in the background because they're so fake. You guys have no idea how fake these people are. In the background, they will support people where the public, like, if you found out they did, they, they would lose their, they, nobody would like them anymore. They are sitting there befriending people and hanging out and doing all these things with people you and the public don't like, but it looks bad for their brand. So they pretend this life in the background, like, oh, I'm not really friends with them and to do evil onto others. It is the craziest shit ever, but trust that is going on. So you'd be surprised all the people who actually really do get along and they're just playing pretend like they're not friends. I told you these people are so fake. It's like if I'm friends with somebody, I'm just going to say I'm friends with somebody. But these people do it because they don't want, you know, all that controversy. So they be fake to you. And so I can guarantee you there's a tank of people up in here that are still like calling Kevin, hanging out having the dinners, doing this thing, but they're not saying anything in public because they don't want the backlash. But what type of humans are those? <laughs> they're frauds. Those are the true frauds. Kevin didn't even like the word fraud. Fraud really pissed him off. I thought that was interesting. 
I go, don't call Kevin a fraud, because that's the word that he stuck with. He's like, so they called me a fraud? A fraud? Yeah, it was like, y'all be frauds up in here. I like Kevin's brother. You know his brother? It's this. Don't take it wrong. I hope nobody takes this wrong. He reminds me of my great aunt. Because, and here's kind of why. So my great aunt was a lesbian who kind of was in the closet, but kind of not. And she kind of always reminded me of Rod Stewart. But yet, like, it was weird. And then I was thinking about this story. And I go, I'm pretty sure she got sexually abused as a kid. Because the ma the sister of the evil one, the one that came out really evil. Actually, they're dynamic. This is so weird, actually, when I'm thinking about it. The father of theirs reminded me of my evil grandmother's husband. Who is actually not my real grandpa. I think he's like my step grandpa that came in later and he was like all nice and kind of submissive like for a while and then one day he like backhands me at a gas station the dude looks just like their dad and i was like that's just weird and then he passed away like long before that evil thing did and um then then but the dynamic in their family sounds like the mom was I don't know, like their mom, there wasn't much talk about the mom. Like the mom thing, it just like they had a really weird kind of close relationship, which was questionable. And then in this one, this mom is absolutely evil, like pure evil in our side. But the sister of my evil grandmother kind of looked like Rod Stewart. Like, I don't know if she was purposely trying to do that or if it was just happened to be type of thing. But she always reminded me of him. And then, um, yeah, but she was really tall. Oh, my God. She is extraordinarily tall. I think she was like six foot something. And I think now when we were going through the historical thing, I think she's like a half sister. Like she's not even a full sister. She's like a half sister. And I don't even know if they grew up really together or if they did, it was only for a short time, maybe. But then they hung out later. And then me and her got along. And then, um, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like, there is some similarities. But the other similarity is because I, my dad was old enough to be Kevin's dad. So I think that's why there might be some relatability in the story. Because of the era that they were born in. Because my dad would be the age of, like, their dad. And then... They were abused back then, and there was a different time period of how they were abusing the kids. And so, obviously, their dad got massively abused. We don't even know what happened to the dad of Kevin's. But their dad is, is um, my dad is old enough to be Kevin's dad, but Kevin's old enough to be my dad. He could be a dad to me. Like, he's old enough to have me as his kid. And I'm like, that's so weird. But anyway, I go, yeah, there's this dynamic and the way that they were, like, they weren't happy men. They were, um, well, my dad tried to make light of things that you shouldn't. Like, he laughed at all the wrong things. Like, when something's uncomfortable, he'd laugh at. When something's like, you know, someone's getting their arm chopped off. It's like, let's make a joke of it. You know, it's like those things, like these off, like, things. Um, so it wasn't like he was, like, chronically, you know, like... I hate the world. He tried to be like, there was times that he had this like thing going on, but, um, so there was some good times there. It wasn't like this total hateful bringing up in our family. It was like, um, I had a lot of love for pets, man. I was like, I'm going to marry all my pets. I love my pets. I love everybody. I'm going to get married to everybody. Like it was totally this. So we had, Love was present, but the love that those two had was not love. It was like, I'm going to find the real thing. You know, like this thing in this whole section. And then when you find out that all the men are destroyed because of child abuse, it makes the world really shitty. They don't say, you know what's funny? They don't say that Kevin is a very loving guy. <laughs> they said he's sensitive. No, Kevin plays sensitive. He... Kevin, um, um, maybe that's another word for bipolar. Maybe it's another word for, like, his ticking time bomb. Like, he gets very upset really quick. They're like, he's sensitive. You know, you said he, like, raped you. And then he gets angry and he busts a window. <laughs> you know, it's like he's sensitive. Okay, articulate. So, yeah, he talks 
But this is a character. When he's talking, he's uh, being a character. That's not a real person. So he'll he'll do this like prim and proper thing. He's like, and yes, and we would do this, and do, he does this thing, and it's so fake. And I just can't do it. I mean, I could fake it. I mean, that's how I have to be around my family, right? Like back in the day when I was a kid, it was like everything had to be prim and proper. So it's like, can you please pass the butter, please? Yes. I could totally, totally run with it. And it'll trip you guys out. Um, but yeah, it's just, I can't, it's so fake. It's, it's not, that's not a real person. So it says, and non-judgmental. Kevin, um, <laughs> The, 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 all this crap, you know, it's just that it, it, it with the terrific sense of humor. He's like, you know, he really told those victims off. It was fucking hilarious. Oh, you know, but again, they don't say like, he's like the most loving, you know, compassionate human being that he's ever known. Like that's not in here. <laughs> that's not in here. He's a genius. Uh, if you want to call being a master manipulator a genius, I didn't call him dumb, but I was just like, his thing, he did get dumb. Like, at a point when he's, like, exposing himself. Like, <laughs> not physically, but he's exposing his true character. Like, he's stumbling over things really badly and these people want to play this game. Like, what is it to them? Like, what are they hiding? And what is it that they're getting from letting him be this person? How the victims of them feel right now reading this. I had to deal with this for 20 some odd years. And so I just want to tackle it because it to put that pain down a little bit and view it in the proper manner. Because I had to take this in for so long with these people and it's bullying. It is bullying and they're going to take it and it, it's it's like, it, 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 there are feelings that I, you can't really express like sometimes because it's just like, you see the vindictiveness of these other people beyond Kevin and they have no soul. Like they don't care about other people getting harmed. They just don't have it in them. Sharon Stone's an evil person going on like this. I don't know why. Like it was a weird thing when she brought up that Paul dude. And I was like, yeah, when I was on the set, that dude, somebody was an asshole on that set. And then she kind of runs around the story a bit. And it's sort of like, why even talk? You okay the conduct. You don't want to stop it. And you want to sit there and enable other men to harm each other. Like, they're the ones that have the lack of care for men. That's why it's making it so hard. Because I'm like, I actually do care. Because what's happening is they're raping each other. And they're promoting it. And then they promote it on us. Because that's the real dynamic of it. And it took some time to get there because I was like, well, they keep saying that you can't rape them. And then, you know, it took this thing and then they won't come out and say anything. And then, you know, it was like this. But it was kind of like when they start coming out, then you listen to it. Um, we do not sit there. And we're not going to promote men harming our gender and then trying to say it didn't happen. And then, oh, please look at me. I mean, it's just another Kevin. Because I'm certain Kevin has some stories of somebody touching him. Trust that. I, 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 I could see it happening. But um, it was like turning into this thing like that. And like all these different dynamics. And the way that they're going about it is like, it's only this or that. And that's why I keep talking about the spectrum of things. Because it's not like when I do something, I could actually do something that's more higher on the scale of um on the sociopath scale right that other people wouldn't do but then if you go through other things in life i'm way down at the bottom like right here i'm way down at the bottom sharon hits the fucking far end of the scale of being a socio right here of the no care okay so the further you go up that up that um spectrum um the less uh care that you have for other humans so and sometimes it varies because, you know, you could be somewhere in the middle on one thing and you could care more about humans than this other thing or yourself or others. Oh, no. On this, she just went fucking all the way to 10. Looking at it properly because it's very dynamic. 
it's very dynamic. But when you hit that 10 mark, I don't think you would ever not get out of 10. I think those people present themselves in a way. That's the thing about this thing. I think those people, when they go right here, because what they're showing me is that they don't give a shit about anybody. So they go way over there and it's all self-serving, right? Mm -hmm. They can present themselves. They start presenting themselves like they care about humans, but they actually don't. And you have to be careful of that manipulation right there. And that's where we all get sucked into is thinking that this person actually has a soul. You can call it a soul. I, it's not really a soul. Like they actually have empathy or care for other humans, like as a human, not just as a entertainment value, which, uh, like I said, the people that tend to use that non-judgmental thing actually view people as objects. And then they'll try to present themselves like they don't, but it's too hard for them to hide that. So, um, I, for whatever reason, am on this other spectrum of that. And I was saying how strange it was that those two things are in combination, like that little sadistic side and then that, but, but overly like too much where I sometimes go past on the lower end of the scale where I think is actually is harmful. Like, I don't think it's just like, oh, the end of the scale means they're really good people. No, I think there's actually a negative end. I probably should be saying that it's like there's this like almost like it's so it becomes it could be become toxic like me be if i was too nice to her about this i think i would be be toxic i think right now of me tackling it um where you need to otherwise i would just allow like some bad behaviors to go on so it could be all the way far down there it's kind of hard to explain but i think people can understand that like there's a level of healthy and then you can go into the negative and then versus going to the 10 of the socio and you know, that's like the far worst over there. I don't know, man. Oh, so uh, in the comments, uh, when I was talking about the friend thing, yeah, so we're talking about bullying. Yeah, I believe the parents in that one thing were ne um, neglectful, something in it. There's something in it. Yeah, I'm glad somebody else was thinking it and they were saying some stuff. I go, yeah, the, the you have to really listen. And you could turn the Kevin story into a positive, which we should be using it as a thing to dissect and study it. Because this is the real life study. It's not, it wasn't meant to be a trial study. It wasn't meant to be anything. And it's actually just a real life person going through life as a human. And they weren't living their life under a scope of being studied. So that's why I think that his story is the most accurate as far as the actual dynamics because they're not operating alone. Like Kevin's not operating alone. He's operating with fuel. He's operating with other sociopaths and they're fueling his actions versus, you know, like they try to be like, there's some loner, they're doing this. I go, that's not what, that's not what's going on here. Real life. Here's real life, you guys. And he's open. Um, his life is kind of open to everybody where if we didn't, like I said, if we didn't have the brother helping out here, it would have been kind of difficult to get some of that stuff. But the brother's actually helping I believe the brother's helping humanity out just generally being able to be brave and come forward and talk about the sexual abuse from their father. Because now what we're seeing, because beyond him, is that that's really common. And that's frightening. And it touches home to a lot of people. And that now, this was not a topic of conversation before. You know, it was like this thing where it's like, it only happens to some people. It was like this weird thing about it. And our perceptions of things are totally screwed up. And you'll find that the more you go through stuff, you'll start, your perceptions will start to change around because you're getting out of grooming. When you get out of grooming, your perception on a thing will totally change. That's why. And so the socio likes to flip and go, look, they changed their story. That's not, that's not right. Is because initially they were groomed and the way that they felt about that story seemed normal. And then once you start getting out of that and you get therapy or whatever, you could just get out of it on your own. And you start to look back at that same event and then now it's a whole different thing. The way you perceive it. Um, but as far as bullying go, no, that's been the same. <laughs> like as far as bullying go, that's been the same. 
Okay, yeah. So the story, that's where I was going to go to. So the story I said yesterday, I was saying I hoped that my friend would have told, I was like, I was thinking about it and I go, well, the only other option could be that my friend did it. No, you know, when me and my friend used to F with each other, it would be things like this. I go, oh, you love this guy named so-and-so from our school, you know, being assholes, right? And, um, but to each other, right? So it would be something like that. Like I could see her going, um, if she had a pen, like it would typically be her with a pen or a pencil or lipstick or something like that. That's the garbage that we did. Like she might go, my name loves, you know, Bill. Like she would do some bullshit like that. Like screwing with me in that way. But she had less money than me and her. She wanted to always shop at the bargain center. Like, so it doesn't make sense that she would sit there and go, uh, I shop here at Kmart. Like, it doesn't make sense. Because, first of all, she wasn't even part of that conversation that I could recall. And the other thing about it, which, you know, I didn't give all the finer details to it. I've said these stories simultaneously. Uh, I've said them a lot. So there's actually several stories that kind of coincide with each other from this this uh, conduct. So one was they destroyed an artwork that was supposed to go to Sacramento State. At the time that this happened, I didn't realize that the caller that was calling me may be the Golden State Killer, the serial killer, right? So we didn't put it together and it wasn't a thought that, oh, is there a possibility that this, that, the other right after the calls, right? So there was a chronic thing going on here that I'm oblivious to you right at the time period that this happened. Um, but then there was an incident with a group of people when I got taken back from San Jose to come back to my hometown. I made friends with some psychotic girl. Okay. And she, uh, I told like one day she's like, I really like your shoes. And I go, oh, don't tell anybody. I got these at Kmart, but they were really cool. Like, I was just like, don't tell anybody, you know, but I got these there. It was kind of like that. And then, and then she's kind of like, I don't know. Like, it was just like, this is not the cool thing at all. Like, she's just crazy. Anyway, but it wasn't a big deal at that moment. So then I find out that she's friends with this guy. Like, I had a crush on as a skater boy. He was like literally two feet tall. And um, I went through that story anyway. So I thought he was really cute. And um, I go, oh, you're friends with him. <laughs> I was like, I like him, but he's not going to like me. He's not going to like me. I already know it. Um, and he's, they're going to make fun of me. She's like, oh, I got it. I got an idea here. We're going to give you a name and you can call him and talk to him. And I go, okay. So I played along with this thing, which is totally effed up. And um, <laughs> so... Every time I call them, him and his friend were like drunk or on drugs or some weird ass shit. And then, you know, he's like talking about how his parents have a golf course in their backyard and they're constantly play golf. And then his friend one day was so drunk on drugs or something, dude. And they had me call. I kept calling pay phones because that's where they'd go and have us talk. Because, you know, you went at your house. This is back in the day before cell phones. So they would meet at a pay phone and answer the pay phone. And then I talked to him at the pay phone. And then one of their friends, he was so drunk and whatever, on drugs, I don't know. And he's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck. He started just chewing me out out of nowhere. And then um, then they told me, oh, you know, he's just out of his mind. Like something weird. And I was like, that's strange. And then anyway, one day that girl, uh, me and her got in a tip about something because she's crazy. She's like, I'm going to tell. She was like taunting. She's like, I'm going to go tell him who you really are. And I go, that's hot. That's messed up. Like, she's trying to blackmail me. Like, doing this thing. And then she hangs up on me. And then I go, oh, shit. And I go and try to call him. And then his phone number's busy. This is before you can call in. You know, this thing was busy. Forever. And I go, oh, my God. She's telling him I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And I was so freaked out and panicky. And I go, she told him. So I call him to try to explain, you know, the situation. I go, yeah, she called you, right, and told you about that. I, and I shouldn't have answered. I shouldn't have done this. But apparently she didn't tell him. And so I ultimately ended up telling him myself. At least I was being honest. So I ultimately tell him himself. He's like, oh, okay. 
And yeah, I'd be kind of weirded out with the situation too. I totally would. But the truth is it was her idea and that's her friend. And so anyway, I was honest about it. And then I didn't think anything further was going to happen about it because it was like whatever. And then, and then one day we had to go walk through the classroom to get to my art class. And I walked through their classroom and he was in the classroom and I didn't know he was in the classroom. And they started uh, teasing me going, Clara, like really loud. And I was like, oh God. So the bullying level was on that level. But I don't recall any further, like, I don't know. Like, it's a big question in this story. So next door is the art room. Now, he's not in my art class. Who is in my art class? So how does anybody in my class know that my art is going to Sacramento State College? And so it seemed like it was really weird because he's not in my class. That girl I don't believe was in my class. The only way that this could be connected to her is if she was in my class. And I was trying to question this. I go, well, the people that have an MO here would be those people. Um, I stopped talking to that girl and then uh, the other two guys were just being idiotic and then I didn't talk to him in school. It was humiliating actually. So then um, so my art gets accepted to go into the Sacramento State College, some, some sort of show thing. And then somebody came into the the art room. Now, the art room, the door itself to our class, faced out to the street. So there was two entrances from the school. Like if you're in our school and you're walking to class and doing this thing, you have to walk through a classroom, which is through the classroom where that guy was in. But the you could go around and go from the street and go right into our classroom. And right there, there was a kiln room and you could go into that room and then you would have to know what my artwork is and know that it was in the kiln. So it was in the kiln and somebody took red paint and poured it all over my project and it shattered in the kiln. So they meant it to look like it was bleeding or some shit, okay? It was pretty messed up. And the teacher like was so in shock by it she's like i don't know what how this happened you know she's like doing this thing and she's like it's too late to do a new one and all this and i feel so bad and blah 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 but nobody reported this right and i'm sitting here like i have no idea who would have done this to me and i go the only people i could think of would be those people but check this out so then the story turns more dark like something weird about it and my friend, I meet this new girl, right? I meet this other girl and like, we weren't really as comfortable yet with each other yet here, but we became friends. And then she comes over to my house. She stayed over a lot, I think. So she came over and then it was during the summer break. Now, mind you, this, this art project thing happened at the, probably at the tail end of the 90, the what, what, 87 year. And so then we had summer break. And I'm like, I'm confused if this happened in summer break into the eighth grade or if it was summer break after eighth grade going into ninth. And it will matter. But I think the girl that I was friends with before her ended up going to a different school or moved out of town because I don't recall her ever again after that year. So... Then one day she's like, okay, we're going to go to, we we're going to take a walk down the street. And I don't, I think it was her that wanted to go to Kmart or some, we were just screwing around. Like, we're just going to go over to these stores. That, that, that was it. I think it was just one of those type of days. So it wasn't even like we planned something and she's staying with me and there was no spray paint on her. We're walking together. I go, unless she's hiding spray paint in her bag, but I don't think she even had a bag with her. We were just screwing around. We're kids. We're just walking. Like, she was with me the whole time. And she's never done that. Like, I, I don't know of any situation where she took spray paint and did some crap. Like, she's not that kid. But, um, so, yeah, so we're walking together during the summer. So, this is, like, months later. Like, way after that other incident. And we go into the Kmart and then it had my full name sprayed up on there saying that I shop there. But there was something so eerie about it that we were being stalked. Because I kept questioning, I go, how would this even happen? We weren't even planning on going there. Like there was no pre-plan. And how did it happen to be the day that we just walked over there? Now, 
I was saying, I go, now, if it was the, the East Area, the Golden State Killer, it could make some sense because the, okay, so both things have to do with Sacramento. Um, there was a lot in the story with that thing. So the, and it could be even the other group of people I'm talking about. However, let me explain this. So the road goes straight out to Sacramento, this side road. Okay. So this is the road that we're walking on. So if somebody was following me around, they could see, oh, she's going to go over there and they could have drove right past me and went up in there and did that. So this is before, you know, mass security cams, you know, let me see your cam and before any of that shit. So the other portion that makes me not believe it's her because that's not really her personality to do that thing. Um, two, um, the height of the spray paint. Okay, so this was a major thing in it. What made it so creepy because the spray painter was red paint. So again, it connects back to the destroyed artwork with the red paint paint and it was on the top of the ceiling but not on the ceiling but they spray painted across the top of the ceiling and i go she's not even tall enough to do that shit and i definitely am not and it doesn't make sense uh she's not tall enough for that i don't believe that was her doing that because it was to the top of the ceiling and it was across the entire wall. Like it was the creepiest, scariest looking thing I've ever seen. I think the wall itself was painted blue. I don't remember, but then it had this blood red, my full name, shops here, blah, blah, blah. But it's the visual of what this looked like that made it scary as hell. And also how did it get there? And it wouldn't stay there very long because our hometown was not a bunch of, you know, that crap. They would have cleaned it up right away. And I'm like, that is freaky as hell. I don't recall anybody following us, but I wasn't looking for anybody following us. My friend's walking with me. There's no spray paint. I looked in the garbage. There was no spray can. So it's not like she came in there and sprayed it. And I was looking because I was like, this is bizarre because she went to use the restroom and I waited for her. And she's like, you need to see this. Oh, my God. So why would she do that? She would be psychotic if she did that. So I was thinking about it, though. I was like, you know, I would like to hear like somebody did that as a prank, you know, because it makes the story make me feel better. So, yeah, I contacted her. Um, when was it last year, like two years ago, something like that. I just contacted her and I was asking her some question. I go, do you remember this? And then she's like, no. And the honest to God truth, I've questioned many people about certain situations and they don't have the memory. Okay, now the reason why they don't have the memory, and I already know how this works in people's brains, uh, many times because the incident itself is not significant to them. So it's difficult to pull that out. So whatever happened there, it wasn't significant enough for her to retain that memory. And however, if she was the one to have done it, like been the bad person that did it, she would definitely remember. Um, but I go, did you, I don't know. I just mentioned the thing. She don't remember it. So no, I, I don't believe that she did that. It doesn't make sense for her to do it. Number one, she couldn't reach that high on the ceiling. Two, she didn't have spray paint when I was walking with her. I didn't see that. And three, uh, she's never teased me about shopping at any uh, discount store that would, be bizarre because she's the one that wants to shop at the discount store so you know, I did go in there anyway so yeah so I was in there but the thing is is like uh okay so the east area rapist that dude um he wasn't on our radar um and in the portion where I was getting phone calls in the 85 86 portion like right before this was going on um, they said they went into the house for the underwear thing. And the thing is, in that conversation with my mom, uh, I was mad at her for taking me to Kmart and buying me the, these big fucking underwear. I was so mad about it. And so it did come up in that portion there. And I go, he said he went into the house, so he may have overheard that. And then it's used as a, um, he's taunting me. Because it seemed like the situations that were having happened to me were taunting me. He was taunting me the whole time. 
So yeah, there was a tail off. That could just be the case. And he decided he wanted to destroy my career. <laughs> I was like, he wanted to destroy my art thing. Um, so yes, that's a possibility. But the other possibility could be those kids, right? Now on the kid portion, it doesn't make sense either because that boy was shorter than me. I'm pretty sure at that time he cannot reach that. The boy? No. He was like two feet tall. I liked the short guys back then. Anyways, uh, he cannot reach that. Uh, his little pal, Jimmy, uh, may have, he was a little taller, but, uh, the story didn't really revolve around me and that guy. It was, well, that was his friend, but like what, I mean, who would go stalk me down and go do that? Like he's very secondary to the story. Um, I'd say if there was any possibility, I go, he's the only taller one, may maybe at that time. I don't know how tall he was then. Uh, the girl that was psychotic in it was not that tall either. Um, it's like an adult person did it. I don't know. I can't tell you who could reach the ceiling. And so I can't do it right now. Like if you gave me spray paint, I couldn't go and do the ceiling thing like that. It would be kind of messed up. Like it would look all, I don't know. It wouldn't look right. So that's why I started questioning it because when the East Area Rapist thing came out and I called FBI, I started going back into the story where things seemed like a gaslight, like weird things that were happening. And I go, yeah, so somebody came and broke my window on that same country road that goes straight out to Sacramento. And I go you could point your finger at a number of people, but why would somebody come and break my window? You know, like that's up and beyond the typical, you you look like Satan or Satan, you know, this crap. I mean, they literally did a crime and broke my window. And, you know, the cops are sitting there trying to blame me for it or something. Like, I don't know. They're trying to bust me for, you know, having pepper spray. I was like, this is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, there's conduct like that where it's like, mm, I don't know, dude. So yeah, he could have came into town, fucking broke my window, went through the drive-thru and then went back to Sacramento. Absolutely. That's what's scary about it. Cause I worked on the road that goes right out to Sacramento. And so I worked at a fast food place. So you could easily keep coming in stalking, going through the drive-thru, doing this bullshit and then take right back off, right down back to Sacramento. It's the same road where it happened. That's what I'm saying. The incident that happened at the at the Kmart thing was literally like either in the summer of 87 or the summer of 88. Oh, no, it would have been the summer of 88 to 89. Yeah, summer of 80. Yeah, so it was either the summer of 87 or the summer of 88. But the window thing happened in 1990. And it was, I don't believe it was in 91 because it was in the last couple months of, before my graduate. No. Um, well, it was somewhere in between that period in 90 and 91 is when the window incident happened. So it's just a couple years later. It wasn't, nothing is like back to back in the way that you would think. It was like the first incident was in the classroom, which I think that those two things are related to the bathroom incident because they both have red paint. It's just that in that situation, it's pointing to a stalker. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense because who the hell would be going on this bad? You know, why would that little Richie, that little piece of shit sit there? He's like that, but her it going on like that. Like I was nice to him, like even regardless of that. And then I was honest about the situation and it was that crazy girl. Um, so I didn't really, it was just a humiliating situation. So, oh, he's going to go, but I didn't tell him about Kmart. So it wouldn't be him talking about Kmart. Why is he going to go on about Kmart? That's what I'm saying. I go, it doesn't make sense. It would be that fucking girl, but I don't think the girl was here anymore. She's a creep, dude. But I mean, I don't know about that thing. I haven't seen that girl at that point for like, I hadn't talked to her for months and months and months, if not a year. That's what I'm saying. I go, if it was that girl, she absolutely needs to be committed. That's why I'm like looking at the story. I'm like, it feels like a stalker. Like when I went back into the story, the thing was, is that when I seen it, 
I was humiliated. And so if I report it, then they're going to go, see, you do shop at Kmart because you found it at Kmart, right? It was like a fuckery to me. And it was horrifying. But the serial killer, the stalker serial killer, if he knew the truth, which the truth was that I, I had the problem with go my mom going there and buying these fucking grandma underwear. Okay, so that was the truth of the story. It wasn't so much this other stuff, but I was looking at it and I'm like, yeah, because he said he went into the house. He could have just been in the house and he hears us talking. And so he knows what's going to bother me. And so for the stalker serial killer to go and follow me that day to do something like that to cause terror. Yeah, that was in his M.O. Because I was the cop kid, right? So he's trying to terrorize the cops that were um, going after him. And I go, yeah, apparently my dad was like doing some bullshit about that. But I didn't know, right? Completely oblivious to this whole thing. And as like it fits more him. Because he's putting bloody red shit all over. Like it's, it's, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Oh, what, me calling some guy? But this went on later. Richie's not following me around, dude. That little fucking brat. No, why is he gonna? Then he's then he's the creep of the story. He's the biggest creep of the story. He cannot fit to that ceiling. Nor nor <laughs> nor does he know anything about Kmart. That's why I'm just like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for him to do that. Now Jimmy Perez, that little drunk ass fucking drug addict, dude. Um. <laughs> His little other skater friend. I was like, I mean, I don't know his character that well, but uh, I think some of my other friends are friends with those people. Um, I don't recall, like, this is just my memory about it. I don't recall them being more shitty to me later. I don't recall that. I just remember just tr trying to avoid all those people. But um, there was other girl that thought he was cute, whatever, but I don't recall him doing that but i guess if there was anybody in that group of people maybe but how would he know about kmart kmart i talked to him one time and he was chewing me out and he didn't even know who i was he thought i was some girl named clara yeah but he thought i was some girl named clara like he don't know who that is no so i re-brought it up when the golden state killer case came up and i started like giving information to authorities um and it i was re-examining that case there so yeah i i didn't report it because of that situation there now, I mean, of course, there's a hindsight saying, I wish I actually just went up to the store people and did some sort of something just so I can uh, have some reference to it. It did happen. It's just that who the hell's thinking of a fucking serial killer? Like it, it was just it was so eerie. Like the it just it wasn't in my brain to even think like that. I was just like these horrible fucking kids. I go, how is this happening? You don't want to say anything. I go, they're trying to humiliate me. And if I report it, they're going to say, see, you shop there. That was it. That was what went on in my head. And I go, I'm not saying a goddamn thing. That's fucked up. I'm going to act like I never seen it because I don't go there. And that's the end of it. That's exactly why that happened. It's pretty fucked. But that's exactly why that happened. But it could have been related to the serial killer. And I don't know if had I told the store. If they could have even figured that out. Um, so I don't know. They would have had to have security in that year and they may not have. It's hard to know what they had at that time. Um, it is possible they had store security. If they seen a male go into that bathroom at all, that would have been the end of it because it was a woman's bathroom. But I find it really interesting that none of us could really reach that ceiling and it's somebody tall enough that could reach that ceiling. It's fucking crazy. I'd like I still have this imagery in my head and it's just like fucking hair standing. And no, I, it, there's nothing in my brain going serial killer. You know, nothing like that. It was just like, that's creepy. Somebody is following us maybe or one of the kids. Like I was thinking something weird. No, I, I don't think it was her. I mean, she could be shitty, man, but Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we weren't even in a fighting thing. Nothing, nothing. We're hanging out together. Like her MO, like I even have her shit all over my yearbooks. Like her MO would say something like, uh, you're gonna go marry Bill, you know, <laughs> like some bullshit like that, like fucking around like that, you know, uh, 
not to degrade like you shop at some you know place that maybe poor kids do i mean my god her parents like didn't have as i mean her parents had less money than my parents but not by that much but it wasn't like she could sit there and go out and buy a bunch of shit all the time and because her mom had a lot of kids like they had a lot of kids and doing stuff and um no, they loved the bargain stores. She would take me to the bargain stores and I'd go shopping with her. It was probably at places I would never even think of shopping at anyway. And I was like, oh, so I guess it's cool because my friend thinks it's cool. You know, it's kind of like that thing. So it doesn't really make sense in her personality type to go and do that. Like, it just doesn't. And if I'm asking you, like, decades later, it's like, why wouldn't you just say you did it, right? It's just kind of like, what am I going to do? I'm going to get you arrested, like, <laughs> you know? It's kind of like one of those things like, yeah, I did. I was like screwing around, you know, I would totally admit to it if I did some shit like that, but I wouldn't keep, I wouldn't have kept the prank that long. Like if I did a prank, um, and they didn't know right at the time I, I would tell them later. It's not like I would sit there and let it run for like decades and just never tell them that's shitty. Like, cause the, when we prank each other, it wasn't really, even though we we're being kind of malicious, it's like, it's not really for the intent of really trying to harm somebody. Like, that wasn't really our perception about it. Um, so, it uh, doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Like, where'd she get spray paint? She's a kid. So, I don't know. Um, back then, I think you could still buy spray paint as a kid. But that wasn't really anything. That wasn't really a major thing from us. And we didn't take spray paint and start graffitiing the place. It, that just wasn't. That just wasn't our thing. So, I don't I don't know. I have no reference to any bullshit of her doing stuff like that. You're talking about major vandalism. I was like, that's not her. I mean, if anybody was going to do, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I would do it, but I mean, if anybody was going to go dumb like that and be like artistic, because we spray paint on my car later, uh, 17 or 18. Yeah, we took some, we, we still bought some spray paint, but we spray painted my car. <laughs> I was like, we spray painted my car. We did like some hippy dippy shit. We did hippy dippy shit. We weren't sitting there graffitiing buildings, something that wasn't ours. Man, if she did that, she's total socio. I like my friend be totally psychotic. Yeah. I like the whole time I didn't know she's totally crazy, dude. She just flip and this evil person come out. No, I honestly got, I honestly got, I it, I don't believe it was her. She looked really freaked out. It's so funny she don't remember this, but she literally was freaked out. She's like, oh my God, you need to see this. Like, it, she's not a great actress, okay? Like, I was sitting there like, what i was thinking like there's a dead body in the bathroom like i don't even know but yeah that was eerie that was hella eerie that that i i can't forget it but but i asked somebody else the same thing when we had this horrible action happen and it included this other person and they didn't remember it and i go this is interesting it's actually something to study because I know what happened and the situation was so horrifying humiliating bad and she was in with me while it was happening like we all got in the situation and for some reason their memory bank doesn't recall it and i was like i know they're not purposely doing that it's really interesting i go my memory though is much better than most people's um but also it may have to do with the trauma factor in the story and also because it's more re it's more related to me because that person was related to that celebrity camp in that weird way because they were all jealous and shit this whole other thing whereas it is not traumatic to that person maybe where they may have other things like that where they just don't give a shit and they brush it off and it's nothing to obtain in their filing system in their brain and it's not really directly indirectly related to them you know, like what I found out later about the situation. So I have something else to reinforce the memory to keep remembering it because the person in the story actually is related to the people that I know, not to them. And so I have another additional part of that story. So I have more things to keep me from remembering it than that person would to obtain that memory, which is nonsensical. It's just not important. That's what that means. It's not... Um, anything that's um important to to retain that information like there's a lot of things where i don't i mean i haven't really run across anything where someone remembered something where i didn't um it could happen it'll trip me out um they might need to jog my memory like uh if they jog my memory it'll take me 
this is kind of weird about your memory, or at least with me. I don't know about anybody else. If they mention something I don't recall, or if I see something and I'm looking at somebody and I don't recall them right away, it takes um, some time and it like reburns into my memory. It's really creepy. I was like, it's really creepy how this happens. And then all of a sudden, I'll remember it again. It'll take me a little bit. It'll take me a little bit, but it's there. It, it The memory's there. It's just, it needs something to dredge it up. But sometimes maybe it just won't be there because maybe it was the night I was drunk. Maybe it was because I just didn't care about what was happening. Uh, that's most cases. Like you go every day. It's like, do you remember every single day what happened every minute of the day? It's like, no, you don't retain all that because it's nonsensical. It's not important. So that's why that's why they don't remember it. But if somebody actually did the crime... They would definitely remember they did the crime. It's not, I mean, it would be, it would be less likely that somebody did that and then they didn't remember it. And it's like, I remember doing all the shitty ass things. <laughs> I was like, I might have forgotten them right now. And then they bring it up. I'm going to remember because I'm the one that did it. It's like my action. Oh, so this could come into play with like, um, you know, that evil demon Elton John. <laughs> I was like. Uh, he's actually more likely to lie than it would be that he forgot something. But let's use that as a hypothetical situation. Um, Kevin Spacey could have been at his party. And it just wasn't that important to remember. And, I mean, they claim all this other stuff. But let's just say hypothetically. It just may be a thing because they meet so many people that it's not important to remember that he was there on a date. So when they ask somebody something, they just may have no recollection of it. And it could be a thing where it's like, oh, he came later and we didn't take a photo of him. And... He showed up, but I don't recall it because it wasn't important. So that doesn't mean that somebody's lying. And um, like you could look at it like that. Like somebody's not lying. It's just they don't recall because it wasn't important. It was not an import important information to recall it because nobody was being accused of raping a kid. You know, some bullshit like that, right? So um, it can be difficult. But sometimes it takes time to get somebody to remember something. And sometimes they can jog that memory back up if they're... Um, just depends, I guess. It may just be a per person thing. I do have somewhat, see, they, okay, so in a case that just came up where they're going after that stalker girl, um, she was saying she has a photographic memory. I go, well, she may, um, and then they were trying to say, oh, because she couldn't remember this one thing, therefore it means she does not. And I go, well, I don't, I don't agree with that. I go, I think maybe it is in the same, uh, way that I'm speaking of it right now, like the things that are important that they will remember photographically in their brain is the things that will matter. And the other things that you would just toss out, because I don't know of any person, I mean, even with the photographic memory would sit there and remember 50 years, every minute of the day in their brain. I don't think that's humanly possible. And I think it would drive you to insanity. So they were trying to make a point with that. And I go, well, it's interesting because I have, I wouldn't even call my brain photographic. It's videographic. It's videographic. So um, I don't know how they would describe that, but it's not like I have a snapshot necessarily. It's a video footage. It's like, so I'll go through the video. It'll play in my brain. And I'll have a video, sometimes they're really short snippets, so it'll be like this one action and it'll go on and on. So I'm like talking to some guy and then I will zoom on over to looking into a street. Like, so I have this videography memory. And so it makes my memory maybe a lot better than others. But so even then it could be faulty, like I can confuse people. I definitely can, mostly because it wasn't, at the time it wasn't as important, but I recall like some situation where I want to retain that information because the, it, the incident was bad. But I may confuse people faces because I don't particularly zoom in on people's faces, like that's an addition in my memory. And so if they want to study that, they could study that. But <laughs> I was like... But it is, it is kind of interesting, and I'm really bad with dates, because dates I don't find to be important, and I will disregard the dates. I will even disregard words, even though I may know what the word means. I may have difficulty talking about the word, or saying the word, but uh, I may just jump over it, because it's not, I don't find it really important for me to try to mess with it. Like, it's kind of this thing. So, I do that also in real life situations where, like, something's going on, I will disregard it, because I don't find it to be important. So my memory will not 
videotape that. It won't have a memory of that thing like that. So I wanted to explain that. That's why I was annoyed by that whole them talking on that conversation because I was like, well, I type a lot, man. I was like, I could answer 41,000 emails, you know what I mean? But um, is it excessive? Oh, I'm sure it is. Um, but aren't all artists, <laughs> I was like, it's kind of like that thing. Um, but it's, and, and most people have more than six emails. In fact, so it didn't, it, that didn't make any sense to me. I was like, um, that doesn't equal that somebody's doing that thing. Um, even though that person may be doing that thing, but it doesn't equal to that person doing that thing. 